Hello, my name is Dr Jackie Smith. I'm a pulmonologist at the University of Manchester in the UK and I'm going to tell you about our paper entitled Acoustic Cough Reflux Associations in Chronic Cough, Potential Triggers and Mechanisms. This paper is a collaboration between pulmonologists, neurogastroenterologists and our gastrointestinal surgeon at the University Hospital at South Manchester. So gastroesophageal reflux is traditionally reported as one of the major causes of chronic cough alongside nasal disease and asthma. However, we don't well understand how cough events and reflux events are linked to one another. The cough reflex and the esophagus share vagal innervation and these vagal afferents converge in the central nervous system in the brainstem, a location known as the nucleus tractus solitarius. One hypothesis about the causes of chronic cough is that it may be caused by a central sensitization process. Should this be a neural sensitization in the brainstem, then this may allow crosstalk between the cough reflex and the esophagus. And this might predict quite a broad role for reflux in stimulating cough events. The associations in time between reflux and cough have been previously studied. However, such studies have been restricted to groups of patients where extraesophageal causes such as asthma and nasal disease have been excluded. The other limitations of these studies has been the way that cough has been quantified and measured. So in some studies, patients have had to press a button on the esophageal monitoring device when they coughed, and in others, pressure swings in the esophagus have been assumed to represent cough events. My research group has developed a novel cough monitoring system. This is a 24-hour acoustic recording system which allows us to accurately identify the presence and location of the actual cough sounds. So, the aim of our study was to accurately assess the temporal associations between acoustically detected cough and reflux episodes detected by impedance pH monitoring in an unselected group of chronic cough patients presenting to our specialist clinic. In addition, we also looked for the presence of esophagitis by performing gastroscopies. We measured the cough reflux sensitivity of these patients using a citric acid challenge, and we investigated them for the presence of other conditions which might explain their chronic cough. Altogether, we studied 71 patients. They were 59 years old on average, and 66% of them were female. They'd been coughing for an average of five years. We assessed the relationships between cough and reflux events using something called a symptom association probability. We used a standard two-minute window to look at the relationship in time between reflux events and then whether there's a cough event within two minutes afterwards. We then apply a Fisher's exact test, which has allows us to calculate whether the number of events of reflux and cough associated are occurring more frequently than by chance alone. We were also interested in the reverse process, so the possibility that cough events might lead to reflux events. Again, we looked at this using the two-minute window, but we also used a much smaller window of just 10 seconds to check out the possibility that cough events may overcome the lower esophageal sphincter mechanically and immediately lead to reflux events. So here are our main findings. Using our cough detection method, we found associations between reflux and cough in more than 70% of our patients. 48% had significant associations with reflux followed by cough, and 56% had a significant association of cough followed by reflux. In just under a third, both processes were significantly present, suggesting the possibility of a self-perpetuating cycle. To look in more detail at the patients with a positive reflux cough association, we looked at the number and type of reflux events, but we could find no difference between these in patients with a positive association and a negative association. There was also no difference in the number of proximal events, and the majority of events in these patients were actually confined to the distal esophagus. There was no difference in the incidence of esophagitis and no difference in the incidence of other conditions such as asthma, nasal disease, bronchiectasis or eosinophilic bronchitis. The difference we did find is that patients with a positive reflux cough association had a more sensitive cough reflex to citric acid in keeping with our ideas about central sensitization. 
to look at the reverse process where cough is significantly preceding reflux. Again, patients with a positive association compared to those with a negative association had no differences in the reflux type, acidity, or proximal extent. There were no differences in the presence of other diseases. And for this association, cough reflux sensitivity was not different between the two groups. Interestingly, when we cut our window right down to just 10 seconds, we found the number of positive associations dropped dramatically to just 24%. And this only accounted for four reflux events within the 24-hour period. This data is against cough mechanically producing reflux events. The fact that there were more associations for a two-minute window might hint at the possibility that a neuronal sensitization process might link cough to reflux in the way we're suggesting it links reflux to cough. So to conclude, we found that cough frequently temporally associates with reflux irrespective of any of the other underlying conditions that can be identified in these patients. The fact that many patients had both cough reflux and reflux cough associations suggests for some people this may be a self-perpetuating process. And we would suggest that this data is in keeping with a central sensitization process linking reflux and cough events. Thank you.